welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. Over the past seven years, we've understood what matters most to you, the entrepreneur. And in year eight, we're taking head on two of your most pressing concerns, that of funding and mentoring. I'm Sunanda Jai Seelan. On the radar tonight, two pre-budget conversations. First up is with a national spokesperson of the BJP, Gopal Krishna Agarwal. On the other side of a break, we're in conversation with Book My Show. Our first conversation tonight is with the National Spokesperson Economic Affairs of the BJP, Gopal Krishna Agarwal. I asked him about what small businesses can look forward to when it comes to Budget 2020. Also, as the former head of the MSME task force in the country, I asked him about why there are gaps in implementation of the multiple government schemes that exist for small businesses today and what can be done to fix them. Take a listen. Thank you very much for joining us here in our studio for this very special pre-budget interview, talking uh, very you know, keenly about some of the issues that matter most to MSMEs. Who better than to talk to than yourself? Uh, you have, of course, been a part of spearheading the entire MSME task force up till very recently. Uh, and as the BJP spokesperson on economic affairs, watching closely what's happening in the economy, my question to you first and foremost, uh, Mr. Agarwal, is that you've been holding several pre-budget consultations with different stakeholders. Uh, but if I was to narrow it down to talk specifically about small businesses, SMEs, MSMEs, startups, what are some of the key concerns? The most important concern that has been brought out to us is the credit uh, flow to the MSME. Mm -hmm. And the second important they are talking about is working capital requirement because of the GST and other uh, changes in the system of payment of indirect tax and other uh, initiatives by the government they are finding it uh, difficult to meet their working capital requirement. So that's one challenge that they want the government to immediately resolve uh, because of the larger cycle of uh, GST uh, returns, refund, etc. That is coming as a challenge. Then with regard to NPA and the stricture norms with regard to credit, and uh, uh, identification of NPAs and the resolution, et cetera. There is, uh, the, this is an important, that they want a separate mechanism for identification of uh, NPAs, whether at the RBI level, SMA, or uh, for resolution. Under the IBC also, they have certain considerations. So they say that if these three things are tackled, working capital requir requirement through the GST model, and the credit supply at the banking level more liberal and open uh, risk averseness, reduce risk averseness from the uh, uh, lender's point of view sure. for this particularly MSME sectors. Sure. And then IBC or identification of NPA or resolution under the IBC Act. So these three things are tackled. Much of their credit and the fund requirement uh, will uh, see certain uh, improvement. That's what they want. Okay, so uh, let's pick up the first issue and you're talking about the credit flow really to the system. Uh, how is that going to get resolved? Yes, the budget is one of the ways in which perhaps you can see some measures, but it is a much larger issue. Uh, you're looking at NPAs at you know 10-year lows. Small businesses particularly have been most impacted because of the credit squeeze really coming into the system, what are some of the long-term sustained measures that need to be taken to benefit small businesses outside of just the budget? I think a GST is one reform that uh, needs uh, technological <coughs> innovation and uh, uh, technological improvement at the GST network sure. will itself uh, help many of the issues, uh, re particularly relating to GST credit, input tax credit and other things. And second thing is government will have to find out certain mechanism to finance their uh, uh, G, G, uh, the, uh, their liability or their uh, TDS or uh, uh, all the those issues with regard issues. to tax sure. issues with regard to their GST issues. Some sure. banks should give some working uh, capital on that or that is one issue and even they are finding certain reservations with regard to collateral policy of the bank because if they have a 
collateral they are finding some certain type of difficulty in the collateral um, uh, when they are to give collateral for their loan that is an uh, important issue that can be resolved sure. other most Im other important thing at the uh, MSME sector is that they are saying that the small micro and medium uh, and uh, pu putting them together is creating certain uh, policy uh, difficulties. Okay. So if the government can think about a separate policy structure or initiative with regard to small and micro industries particularly sure. and not take out the medium uh, and enterprise level because manufacturing is where government needs to focus more. So they have been saying that uh, put up a certain policy initiative based on small and micro industries okay. and put out a separate uh, structure or policies or initiative with regard to um, medium and uh, industries and me enterprises which are working in the services sector. Sure. So this I found to be a good uh, demarcation which will help uh, the industry as such. And uh, some in, uh, initiative by the government with regard to working capital, one of the very good initiative that uh, I was on the board of Bank of Baroda also. So that time also this initiative and it was our committee which uh, suggested that trades, that uh, tra trading platform for bill discounting with NSC and the PSUs and the government department and MSME sector sure. listing their uh, bills bill for discounting on the this trades platform. So glitches at that level and more awareness about that the and even uh, financing of bank open financing and liberal financing on this platform will also help their uh, working capital uh, requirement. Okay, I do want to talk about the fact that the budget is as much about numbers and announcements as it is about sentiment. Looking at the rest of 2020, we have seen the worst slowdown for six quarters now. The worst slowdown perhaps uh, in the last 20 years is what we're staring at. Through this interview, one message that you want to give small businesses that are watching to say that this perhaps is what the trend you're looking at going forward into 2020. What do you want them to take away from this interview? I would like to just give a message from your side, uh, from through your channel is that MSME should, uh, should understand that the government is very much aware and very much conscious of the economic challenges at the current level. We consider MSME as a very important segment of uh, economic development, employment generation, growth for the country, growth for the economy and the, at the global level also. The experience has been that the MSME has contributed a lot to the manufacturing sector and growth sector. So they, they should uh, uh, completely be at ease that the government is aware of many of the challenges that they face. They stakeholders demand are with us we would definitely do a lot on ease of doing business sure. creating demand for them uh, uh, compliance level ease uh, uh, etc and their uh, credit flow requirement etc though so, but uh, we will focus on technological okay. solutions and uh, 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 the important thing is that at times narration in the economy is and perception about the future is uh, a important uh, discussion around and helps in the economic growth and uh, this narration or perception is not alone built by the government okay. it has to be from the participants also they should not restrict their investment their problems with regard to level playing field etc should be continuously brought to the government okay. we will tackle it okay uh, you're talking about technology and i very specifically want to talk about digital lending uh, NBFCs is a huge segment that uh, we talk to. FinTech, of course, uh, are companies that we feature very often here on the Leaders of Tomorrow. Reports suggesting 10 to 15 percent kind of growth in lending, particularly driven by FinTech companies. Can we expect anything specific from the government for FinTech companies? Definitely. This is an area where Prime Minister has also said several times that artificial uh, intelligence, service delivery are areas where India can have a very big potential. We have a very large population of more than 137 crore 
population which requires services in every field so startup ecosystem stand up ecosystem sure. is where government is focusing a lot and uh, certain tax incentives have been given uh, and uh, we are trying through atal innovation mission or uh, streamlining of patent and technology cal transfer through uh, acad uh, this uh, universities academia industry sure. interlinkages also so government is trying that this uh, whole new ecosystem of startup st and uh, the new, new enterprises service center industries and it enable services where uh, even we are trying to put up several cluster industrial cluster specifically for uh, specific industries that's one uh, Thing that is on the card of the government that we put up along the industrial corridor, certain industrial clusters, sure. specifically for certain industries. All right. On that optimistic note, thank you very much, and we hope to connect with you once the budget announcements have been made. Thank, thank you, for your you time. very much. Thank you. Time for a quick break. We'll continue this pre-budget special on the other side, though. Do stay tuned. Our second conversation in this pre-budget special tonight is industry focused and that is with Albert Almeida, the CEO of Live Entertainment at Book My Show. I asked him what companies in his industry are expecting from budget 2020. I also asked him what the biggest opportunities and challenges are when it comes to the live entertainment space in the country and also what the way forward and some of the excitement uh, that they're working on right now is looking like. Take a listen. having you here on the show on Leaders of Tomorrow. Uh, talking about an industry segment, we don't talk about very often on Leaders of Tomorrow and that's as far as uh, the entertainment industry is concerned, both online and offline. Let's start though by talking about Book My Show as an innovator. You've had uh, the fortune and the misfortune, if I can call it, that of being an early mover in an industry which is evolving as we speak. Uh, let's talk about really that journey and what it has meant to be really the front runner in the space. Interesting that you ask, uh, and it takes me back in time to 1999 when uh, actually Ashish and me were colleagues in, uh, in uh, Hindustan Thompson Associates, which was the erstwhile JWT. Uh, and I think Ashish went on a vacation to South Africa, and uh, like they say, the apple uh, you know, fell on his head, and he decided that he wants to venture into the online ticketing space. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was way before things were online. So when he came back, uh, he quit, he quit the agency and decided to embark on this journey with, uh, with two of his ex-batchmates uh, uh, from management school. And so the journey of Book My Show began, but it was not Book My Show then, it was Big Tree Entertainment and uh, it was, it first really ended up being a concierge service for tickets, uh, where people would call in or would log on to the website and, and ask for movie tickets. Sure. Uh, but uh, like every dot com, dream in that era, it went bust very soon. Sure. But I think uh, the true test of a, of a great idea and the people behind it uh, who, who share, the, share a passion for that particular idea and, uh, is when the chips are down. Sure. And I think the way we've clawed our way back and from 2004 to 2007, uh, before really uh, India went digital uh, and data went uh, you know, the way it went, uh, the three founders actually cobbled up uh, enough courage uh, to say, you know what, the idea is still is still is still there, and therefore built a back end for online movie ticketing. Sure. And in 2007 was when the consumer brand Book My Show was born, uh, and there's been no looking back since. Okay. Uh, the growth has been like you like you've seen. It's been a hockey stick growth in terms of uh, the number of consumers that come to us uh, to buy tickets online. And just to share a few numbers. Uh, we, we get as many as 5 billion page views a month, uh, 200 million visits, and we sell on an, ab, uh, on an aggregate basis in a year 200 million tickets today. 
Sure. So we started this interview by uh, me calling really being in this space misfortune in some sense and I'm referring only to the regulatory environment. Any few peers that we talk to say that it's a very tough industry to be in, uh, not because of the lack of opportunities, there's a massive opportunity waiting to be tapped in India, but because of the regulatory environment, it's a very tough business to be in. For a small entrepreneur who's watching this interview, before we get into the nitty gritties of GST, your expectations from the budget, etc., I do want to talk about uh, are you happy with the, you know, with how things have really moved when it comes to uh, government policies, etc., for your business? Of course, there's much more to be done. But in the many years that you've been here in this industry, are you happy with the changes you've seen on the ground? Well, I think uh, there have been positive changes, uh, and uh, the disposition towards uh, live entertainment and experiences is getting more and more favorable. Uh, but I think we we still have a lot of. Uh, a, lot, a, a long road to travel because uh, we're kind of, you know, dealing with infrastructure which is, uh, you know, which is really not there for quality entertainment. Uh, we're dealing with, you know, like you like rightly said, GST rates which are significantly high, uh, which puts us at a significant disadvantage with, uh, you know, with countries uh, anywhere in the world, whether it's the neighboring countries and stuff. Uh, but in spite of that, I would like to say that uh, there's a conscious attempt by uh, governments both at the at the national level at the state level to kind of collaborate and help and I think they're beginning to realize that uh, with live entertainment comes commerce. Um, we saw what happened with a very very large uh, IP called Sunburn uh, that was almost you know shunned away from Goa for whatever reasons uh, but this year we were welcomed back because we actually you know brought back uh, not just vibrancy but brought back uh, tourism uh, and commerce to Goa for that period of the sunburn and leading into the New Year's, uh, the New Year. Sure. So I think uh, we are seeing that change, and we hope that there'll be a lot more. Uh, and like I said, as uh, as people who are setting the agenda for live entertainment 2.0, if I'd like to call it, uh, the onus is on us to keep chipping at it and hopefully working towards things like, you know, single window clearance for licensing. Uh, because today, you know, it's uh, you just got to keep going from one window to the other sure. to get permissions to do a live event, and uh, I think there can be a lot more that will come, come that can come from the government, mm -hmm. uh, and we believe uh, it will happen. Okay. Speaking of that, your top two or three asks from the government when it comes to the budget. Well, uh, I believe that we should be seen as uh, you know as 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 some as as, a, as an uh, industry that's. Uh, like I said, it's contributing to the uh, to the uh, to the to the economy of the country, whether it be in terms of uh, you know uh, people spending more money on live entertainment, uh, whether it's employing more people, whether it's creating more sustainable communities around uh, around the kind of IPs we build across the country. Uh, so I just believe that the, the disposition needs to change, uh, and we need to get some favorable breaks because we are dealing with, like I told you, uh, inefficiencies on the infrastructure side. Uh, yeah. And you know whatever whatever comes our way will really help us in investing back in delivering great consumer experiences and building uh, you know a, a, a robust live entertainment industry for a country that's young, uh, a country that seeks more of this. Uh, and if you look at our peers around the world, they're they're doing it. Uh, you know, regularly, and they've made a solid industry out of live entertainment. Okay, uh, I want to use this next answer, you know, as uh, some sort of uh, like a masterclass into book my show, if I may, and ask you to talk to our viewers. You know, you started your answer by saying that uh, book my show you started as an online ticketing platform, but you're increasingly looking at live entertainment. What is the breakup right now as we speak? If you can share any numbers in terms of revenue between your online ticketing platform and live entertainment, where are the opportunities? for 2020 for a small entrepreneur who's watching this interview when it comes to the live entertainment space to say that this perhaps are some of the trends that we're looking at this is something that you're perhaps excited by so again to uh, to just give you a sense of the split we still get 65 percent of our revenues from movie from the movie ticketing business uh, it drives a lot of our community uh, and that really gives us the ability to do what we are doing in the live entertainment yeah. space uh, the reason why we are where we are in the live enter entertainment space is because we really want to make sure we build a sustainable economy of live entertainment um, and do those things that some of the uh, promoters who've been, you know, small entrepreneurs, etc., have not been able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and do it on the back of great technology, uh, great, uh, a lot of rich data that we have. Sure. 
and the fact that, yes, we are willing to make investments for the future. And, uh, you know, in doing that, we just believe that not just us, but all boats will rise with the tide. Uh, so my advice to young entrepreneurs is, you know, uh, put your consumer first and make your consumer the king. Uh, deliver a great experience to the consumer because he's paying you, uh, paying you the dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want him to come back, uh, the only way he's going to come back is if you've been able to give him great value, which means uh, the experience has been far better than his expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the live entertainment space, would you say a lot of it is perhaps being dictated by cricket and events like that? Uh, are there opportunities outside of that that uh, businesses and companies like yours are tapping? Well, certainly. I just think that, um, yes, cricket has been a f is, is a phenomenon in India. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just a coming together of things that uh, have made Indian cricket what it is. Uh, and today we've got a number of, you know, huge heroes that, uh, that, that, that people look up to and, and that's built a huge industry for us. Uh, but having said that, I just believe there are significant opportunities, in fact, uh, in the live entertainment space. We've been seeing breakout opportunities not just uh, uh, in cricket, but in other sport activity outside of cricket. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of, the, uh, one of the interesting things is the Pro Kabaddi League, where uh, Kabaddi is like uh, a sport which was played in small town India and almost forgotten, but uh, today you've brought it onto national television, it's slickly produced, each one of those Kabaddi players are, you know, styled so, uh, so beautifully that they've become, you know, icons for uh, India too. So I think that's one great example in the sports area. Uh, so I just believe that there are a lot of opportunities and I think uh, the, uh, we tend to go for the obvious ones. But I, my advice again to young entrepreneurs is do your work, figure out who's really like breaking, breaking through uh, and deliver great uh, consumer experiences on the back of content, what you do around it. Uh, and I think uh, that's the recipe for success. All right, that's our show tonight. If you have any feedback for us, our contact details is up on your screens in just a moment. Do let us know. But as we're ending the show tonight, I do want to talk about something that we here, the leaders of tomorrow, are very excited by. And that is our association with Odd Up, the most trusted name when it comes to everything that you need to know about startups, which the hottest ones are as we speak, what the future evaluation is, what their trends are, etc. This weekly incisive capsule brings you a one-stop shop as far as all the information on India startups are concerned. Tonight, we're putting the spotlight on Style Cracker. Take a listen. Stylecracker is located in Mumbai and was founded in 2013. The startup's total funding raised is $1 million. At its last round of funding, the company's current valuation stands at $4 million. Taking a closer look at funding details, Stylecracker has raised $1 million in seed funding. That's a wrap of our Startup Monitor for this week. We will continue to bring you the most in-depth content on the startup space week after week, right here on Leaders of Tomorrow.